six tips to help improve your fertility from a fertility doctor. Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI. I'm a fertility doctor. This channel exists to help share information about your fertility and your body with you so that you can take charge of your health. I would love it if you would subscribe to the channel. That way we can share this message to more people. And also you can play a role in our community, help ask questions that you want answered in future videos, and we can all learn the most possible together. This video is six tips to help improve your fertility. So maybe this is, I wanna be pregnant someday and I wanna have optimal fertility. Maybe you're trying to get pregnant now. Either one, these are tips that as a fertility doctor, I want you to know. So number one, do not smoke cigarettes or marijuana. I know. So smoking cigarettes has for a long time been studied and we know that it decreases the number of eggs that you have. Now, very few things actually cause you to run out of eggs early. A lot of the things we're gonna talk about in this video can cause you to have poor egg quality or an increase in genetic abnormalities. And smoking cigarettes does both. Decrease in the total number of eggs that you have and can cause an increase in the abnormalities inside the eggs. So the biggest thing that we see is that you have lower ovarian reserve, you have decreased chance of pregnancy per month, and you go into menopause earlier with smoking cigarettes. Now, marijuana has been less studied, but consistently in studies, we see impaired ovulation, impaired luteal phase, and in IVF studies, decrease in embryo development. So overall, this is not a good thing to be consuming if you're wanting to be pregnant now or in the future. We don't have as much data on marijuana for long-term use, meaning if you use it a lot, what's it going to do later? But if you know you wanna have a family someday, definitely that's something that you should avoid both of those. Okay, number two, limit exposure to plastics and other environmental toxins. So plastics like BPA have been studied a lot, and what we do know is they do increase the abnormality inside your eggs, and they also decrease your egg count. So this is something that, you know, plastics that go in the microwave or the dishwasher or you put hot food into, those should all, you should rid your kitchen of those. You really should be drinking out of like aluminum, stainless steel, glass. You should look at your plates and your dishware. You should never be putting those plastic things anywhere where they can get heated up that is going to cause those chemicals to come out of them. Teflon, so those nonstick pans can have something called PFCs or poor fluorinated chemicals, and those also can have negative impacts on pregnancy and trying to get pregnant. So look at your world around you, get rid of toxins where you can. Number three, you really should try to protect yourself against sexually transmitted infections or STIs, specifically chlamydia. Now I know nobody wants to go out and get a sexually transmitted infection, and we often think about using birth control or contraception if we're at a stage where we're not trying to get pregnant yet, but we have to think about condom usage to prevent sexually transmitted infections. Chlamydia infection has a huge impact on the fallopian tubes, meaning if you've had chlamydia in the past, even a mild infection where you took antibiotics for it and it wasn't something severe, can permanently damage your fallopian tubes and lead you to need IVF in the future. So avoiding that is going to be one of the smartest things that you can do. Now, if you've had chlamydia in the past and you can't do anything about it now, what should you know is that you may wanna consider getting a test to check if your fallopian tubes are open, especially if you're older and trying to get pregnant. So if you're 35 and above, you know you have a history of chlamydia, you might wanna ask your OB, hey, can I get a test to check my fallopian tubes because of that chlamydia I had? That way, if something's abnormal, you could fast track to the fertility doctor a little bit sooner because we don't want you delaying care or spending a year trying to get pregnant if there's not a chance that it's gonna happen because those tubes are scarred and blocked. Number four, I would limit my consumption of processed foods, specifically processed meat or processed, you know, packaged really refined foods. So. Red meat and processed meat is a type one carcinogen. So just tip for your overall health is that that increases your chance of cancer. We also know in embryo development studies that the more servings of red and processed meat somebody took in in an IVF cycle, they had poor embryo development throughout it. Meaning, probably doesn't mean you have to exclude this totally, but you should limit it. So when it comes to red or processed meat, definitely should not be something you consume every single day. I usually tell my patients one time per week at the most if we're trying to look at optimizing your fertility. Now, 
if we look at some other factors when it comes to processed foods and packaged goods, they have a lot of other of those chemicals inside of them. So the packaging that goes around some of those foods, in addition to the process component, has a lot of sugar and refined carbohydrates that can cause insulin resistance and that can change your body as it responds to ovulation. So really look at your diet, focus on whole foods, plants, whole grains, and then limit out some of those fake foods and then be wary of the red or processed meat when it comes to how much you consume those. Number five, you should pay attention to your period. Your period is a vital sign, meaning that it is telling you how your brain and your ovaries are communicating. And if your period is off, then it is telling you something. Now, big caveat is that if you're using hormonal contraception, whether it's an IUD, an implant, the shot, the birth control pill, the patch, whatever, your period is no longer a vital sign. And that's okay. It's a great, those are great effective ways to not get pregnant. However, we want to be able to know what our period is doing when we want to get pregnant. So I recommend you stop whatever hormonal contraception three to six months before you want to get pregnant. That way you can give your period a chance to reveal itself before you're really trying and getting frustrated. Now, of course, if you're really not ready to get pregnant, you should use a backup barrier method like a condom or pay attention to your cycle tracking once your period comes back. But you have to kind of give yourself that time to track your cycle over a few months to see if it's normal. Now, what is normal? A regular predictable period is normal, meaning you should be able to mark with quite good accuracy on the calendar within one to two days when your next period is going to be coming. And if you can't, that's not a good thing because it should track within itself. Now, normal is an individual characteristic. So it could be as short as 21 days or as long as 35 days, as long as it comes within that one to two days for you. So if it's 23 days, then 25, then 24, then 26, that's fine. If it's 31, then 30, then 32, that's fine. If it's 24, then 35, then 26, then 32, that's too much variation. That's irregularly regular and that is not normal and you should seek an evaluation. It could be abnormalities in the brain secretion of hormones, it could be thyroid abnormalities, it could be abnormal ovarian response, but you deserve to understand what's going on because there may be able to be lifestyle changes or medications you can use to help regulate your period. It's telling you something about how your body is working and you need to be listening. Now, one other thing I want to say about this, one of the only signs we have of having low ovarian reserve, meaning running out of eggs early, is a shortening of your cycle length. Meaning from day one, the day you start bleeding, until the day before your next period begins. If it is consistently shorter than it used to be, or now irregular when it used to not be, those could be big red flags. So when we think about that, if somebody tells me, in my 20s, my period was every 28, 29 days, but now I'm 34 and my period is coming every 23 to 24 days, I am suddenly concerned that there could be low ovarian reserve or diminished ovarian reserve, meaning we have less total eggs remaining. So that's one of the only clinical signs. So if you notice a shortening of your cycle interval, especially compared to the past, and you want to have a baby, whether it's now or in the future, please go see a fertility doctor or your OBGYN. Ask for ovarian reserve testing, specifically an AMH blood test. And the reason why is that if you find out your AMH is low, you may do something different. You may freeze your eggs, you may start to get pregnant sooner, or you may undergo an evaluation and find out you have a medical problem, and you deserve to know that information. And that brings me to health tip number six, the last one, which is do not ignore your age. Age is still the number one predictor of success when it comes to fertility treatments. And can people get pregnant at older ages? Yes, and I talk about this all the time. However, is that common? No. When you're 40 and you're trying to get pregnant, typically your chance of pregnancy per month at best is going to be about 5% per month. Now, when you're younger and you're 30, it's closer to 20% per month. So that's a huge difference. If you're purposefully waiting to start your family until you're 36 or 37 because you're chasing these big dreams or you're waiting on the right person, that's great. However, if you want three or four kids, do the math and does that make sense? And so sometimes we have to really step back and look at the big picture because I don't want you to have to sacrifice something without knowing it. 
This is why we recommend, you know, early fertility testing if you're older, if you're trying to get pregnant, you're 35, 40, or older. If you know you're waiting to get pregnant, you might want to test your fertility just because if something is off, what would you do? If you found out you were running out of eggs, would you freeze your eggs? Should you freeze your eggs anyway? Can you freeze your eggs? That, I have whole videos on freezing eggs. It's something that was not available when I was in that age range, but it is available now. Yes, it's expensive and it's not right for everybody, but it definitely can move the marker on preserving your fertility if you are not ready to get pregnant, specifically if we find out something is wrong with your fertility, like you have a low egg count or you have bad endometriosis, history of chlamydia with blocked tubes, that might be an option that could really change your entire family dynamic. Every day I have people say, well, I'm healthy even though I'm older. And yes, being healthy does help to some extent, but nothing can overcome that age. So we can't ignore it. We need to think about it when it comes to our fertility plan because I know you're planning out all kinds of things in your life. All right, friends, I hope these six health tips helped you try to understand your fertility and some of those modifiable lifestyle factors. If you like this, please subscribe to the channel. You can also get a deep dive into lifestyle factors if you're trying to get pregnant or want to be pregnant or undergoing fertility treatments in my Enhance Your Natural Fertility program. You can find that at nataliecrawfordmd.com. And as always, you can check out the As A Woman podcast or you can follow along on Instagram at nataliecrawfordmd for more information. Thanks, friends.